Welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to install the Omida SDN controller version 5.13.23 in a Proxmox container. The first thing we're going to need to do after logging into our Proxmox web interface is to make sure that we have a template to install this on. We're going to be using Ubuntu 22.04, but to verify that we have this template, we're going to select our local drive and we're going to go to CT templates. In CT templates, if we don't see 22.04 like we have right here, we're going to click on templates, we're going to click in search, and we're going to type Ubuntu. That should give us a list of all available Ubuntu images where we can select the 22.04 image and press download. I won't be downloading mine today as I already have it. At the point that that finishes, you should see 22.04 appear right here. You're gonna be able to then click Create CT and you're gonna get this window. You're gonna title it with a name of whatever you want and you're gonna enter your password information. Now we're gonna hit Next, moving to Templates. At this point, we'll select the 22.04 and hit Next. For our disk, we're going to leave it as 8 gigs. Press Next. For our CPU, we're actually going to increase this to two cores, as I found this won't run very well with just one. We'll hit Next. And for memory, we're going to give it 2 gigs. Again, I found to have problems running at 512 as well as one gig, I was seeing near 100% utilization. For network, we can choose static or DHCP, as well as configure your bridge. Your default bridge is going to be VMBR0, and I'll be moving mine to my management bridge. I'm also going to set an IP address, and I finish that out by with a slash 24, because my IP ranges run from 0 to 254. And then I'm going to specify my, my gateway address and then click Next. My DNS settings should stay the same, so I'll press Next again and I'll finish, which will build our VM, or container rather. Now that we see Task OK, we can go ahead and exit this screen. We can select our SDN controller that we chose and we can press Start. Now with our controller up and running, we can see our login window. We're going to log in with root and the first word we set up when we did the installation. The first command I'm going to issue is going to be an apt update to update the repositories. Now since we have installs to do or updates to do, I'm going to issue an apt upgrade-y to install them. Once your updates are finished, it'll return you back to a command prompt and we're ready to start issuing the commands needed to install the Omoda SDN controller. The first thing we're going to need to do is install multiple different dependencies that aren't installed with the controller package. The first one of which is a headless Java software program, and we're going to use this command to install it. After pasting the command, we're going to press enter, answer y, and hit enter again. Now the next two commands are going to download and install a software package from Ubuntu called libssl. This first command using wget will download the .deb package. And the second command will install it using the dpkg-i command. Now we need to install some software that's going to allow us to recognize a key token that's going to give us access to an outside repository that we'll use to install a database that the SDN controller is going to save your settings and login information in. This echo command is adding that key token for the repository to the correct file in the sources list. And we're going to use wget to grab the other half of that key token. Now we'll press our up arrow to select apt update, which is going to update our repositories for our newly added repository and key token. And since we need a version other than our oldest version, we need to specify each component of the database followed by an equal sign and the version. The version we'll be downloading is 4.4.9. And now we're going to install the last two packages. 
And with these packages installed, we're going to be able to now go ahead and download the software from the TP-Link website for the MITRE controller and do the install with the following two commands. The first one's a wget command that's going to download the .deb package that will then use the dpkg command to install. And now that we're done installing this, we returned back to our command line and it gives us the address at localhost where we're able to reach this. I found this address to be incorrect from reading TP-Link's documentation, but no fear, I'll show you what to use. First, we want to make sure we go ahead and find the IP address of this server. And in order to get internet access on my network, I actually changed it. So here it is. It's 192.168.28. So we'll remember that and close out our console window, head to our browser, open a new tab. We're going to enter HTTPS colon slash slash 192.168.28. Eight, and then it's going to be a colon 8043 and we can press enter. It's going to give us this warning. We know that the certificate is not going to be a worry, but it is self-signed. So we'll just hit advanced. We'll tell it we're going to proceed. And now we can start setting up our MITRE software controller. Unfortunately, at this point, I already have the software controller set up on my network and configured. So I won't be able to take you much further in this process in this video. But it was straightforward and easy to do. So I hope you enjoyed this video and this got you started using your MITRE software controller. Now you do, I do want to mention that this very likely will clear all the settings in your TP-Link MITRE devices. So be prepared for that when you start configuring your network. As always, have a good night. If you found this video informational, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to help virtualize everything continue to grow.